the vacuum of space. You're about to imply that the phrase vacuum of space refers to an actual vacuum cleaner in space, aren't you? Kindred Spirit messaged me on the interwebs recently and asked me how come I thought the vacuum cleaner model of a black hole wasn't fitting. Yes, you are, and you're going to claim that they're black holes. I responded very simply, where's the motor? Where's the cleaner bag? The filter? The power source? How does it work? There is no vacuum cleaner model for black holes. Nobody thinks they work like that. I get the analogy. It's a vacuum cleaner because it sucks things up, right? So you understand at best it's an analogy and not a model. It's a crap analogy that would only be used to explain the concept to a five-year-old, and even then it's still not a good description. What about the center of the galaxy, which is not only absorbing light, but also radiating it? Is that like the light on the top or something? The black hole at the centre of our galaxy isn't radiating light, but there are lots and lots of stars orbiting it that are. So no, it's not the light on top, and literally this whole vacuum cleaner in space thing, nobody thinks that. And I don't think you think anybody really thinks that either. I think you've been rather disingenuous. For that matter, why don't we use the analogy of a whirlpool or a hurricane instead of a vacuum cleaner? These would also be really crap analogies. Especially since with the whirlpool, the surface of the water from above appears flat. And much like our diagrams with whirlpools and water, the energy going into the vortex is going somewhere. Where? A space of greater density. Because at the bottom of the whirlpool, it's all really heavy because there's the weight of the water compressing on top of it. I mean, isn't that the perfect model for the black hole? No, it's as far from a perfect model as you can get. Firstly, a whirlpool is nothing like a black hole. And secondly, everything you just said about whirlpools was wrong. Just because your picture of a whirlpool looks like a gravity well doesn't mean they're the same thing, otherwise we could use an ice cream cone model. Also, they're not sucking in energy and it's not denser at the bottom of the whirlpool, it's got air above it, not lots of water compressing on top of it. Look, this is getting to the point where you're either completely ignorant of the topics you're talking about here, or you're lying. Nassim's work describes the structure of the vacuum, a sacred geometric prism which is an incredible, if not perfect, representation of the structure of reality. All of the elements, all of the atoms, and even the stars follow a basic set of principal patterns which are mapped out like this. What the hell just happened? We were talking about black holes when out of nowhere we switched to a word salad of gibberish about the structure of a vacuum and showing shapes that you've just asserted represent reality. The idea is that the vacuum of space itself is dividing in very specific ways and relationships. The cube octahedron is one of the fundamental shapes which fractals out. Its opposite is the star tetrahedron, the inward and the outward flow of energy from the center. When we begin to look at the relationship between the data points in the vacuum, we see that they equate the phi ratio over and over and over. Everything you said there means absolutely nothing. It was just a collection of big words strung together that make no damn sense. Saying data points in the vacuum equate to the phi ratio is just gobbledygook. Make a note of the word gobbledygook. I like it. I want to use it more often in conversation. <laughs> yes. This is the pattern we come up with, which Nassim has called the 64 tetrahedron grid. Were you to put a sphere around every point, they would create a perfect three-dimensional flower of life. This is basically a three-dimensional Metatron's cube, a structure by which all known structures can be found. You can sit around drawing geometric shapes that overlay each other all you like, you're yet to show how they actually connect to reality in any way, you just state that they do. The pattern can continually fractal larger and smaller to create complex geometries and structures, such as molecules or organ systems in our bodies, which are made up based on the variety of different patterns all found within the shape. If this structure is the male component, then the female component would be the toroidal flow between and around all of the points. Imagine that every sphere in and of itself is a torus, each with a singularity of its own, but the larger fractal is a larger sphere, also with a singularity, of which all of the other toroids are connected to. This is just spirograph for hippies now, it's meaningless non sequitur twaddle, you've still failed to show how this exists in any way. You can see this geometry really clearly in the brain. You have the entire field, which is a network of interconnected data, then you have the corpus callosum, which acts like an accretion disk of a galaxy. And then the pineal gland right in the center, which is the connector and the singularity for the entire network and field that is your brain. How are you still going on? This is just more meaningless gibberish and drawing circles on stuff. Brains are not accretion disks, material is not orbiting my head, and that pineal gland stuff is just mangling 300-year-old philosophy and chucking science words in there. This structure also breaks down our construct of time because of the nature of the singularity. The singularity is the infinite vacuum, a space that may or may not be very strong, but has a relationship to all of the singularities around it. 
all of the empty space. By the fact that they are connected through their singularity, energy and information can pass through the center and translate to anywhere else on the grid if there's a passage to it. You're still just stringing words together, making odd assertions and slipping in false claims. For example, gravity doesn't vary with size, it varies with mass. Everything else you just said was unmitigated bollocks. Much like the idea of folding a piece of paper to create a wormhole, when the singular connection is made between two points, now the entire distance can be traveled instantly. Folding paper doesn't make wormholes. It does make paper planes, though. This is demonstrated scientifically when we see that subatomic particles can be in two places at the same time, or break the laws of physics when it comes to time and order, almost as if some particles are moving backwards in time. Seriously, time-traveling subatomic particles are real. Sources in the comments. Huzzah! A quoted source. Wait, did you even read your source? It totally disagrees with everything you just said. Even your source that claims FTL particles may have been observed is proved wrong by the first source that references this very experiment and how they investigated further and discovered faulty equipment had given false results. Yes, this is in fact the structure of the vacuum of space. The blueprints of the universe. Right, that's it. I'm done. I've watched the rest of the video and it's just more of the same. It's an unrelenting mishmash of scientific words thrown around together in whatever context is required to make the sentence seem vaguely coherent. All while ensuring certain words are repeated to make it seem like there's some connection to what you're blithering on about. I've watched a few of your videos now and they all follow this similar format. You start off by claiming to care about science and understanding in a light fluffy tone, always begging the questions if you're just offering information to be considered. Then you set up some straw men, and then serve up a non-stop rant of baseless assertions drizzled over a nonsensical word salad with a few factual errors and misrepresentations thrown in for good measure. Again, you're either clueless about the science you're trying to incorporate into this woo, or you are purposely lying. I know I'm not the first person to call you out on these matters, and if you'd done your research into these topics as you claim, you wouldn't be putting up such ridiculous straw men, unless you were intentionally trying to deceive people. So whether willfully ignorant or purposely deceitful, people can decide that for themselves. But regardless of which it is, what you are doing is not science.